So uh, what I did between the, the snotting and the coughing is uh, I was up at the State House last week on Wednesday for the Defend the Guard mm -hmm. uh, legislation. So this had actually already gone through its public hearing, and this was a committee meeting. So it had been tabled, I believe, last legislation. Retained, retained or something, yeah. yep. And so they had a committee meeting, and... Uh, for folks back home, defend the guard. The position is, so it's defend the guard, uphold the constitution. Mm -hmm. People want to learn more, they can go to defendtheguard.us. But basically what it says is you cannot deploy the New Hampshire National Guard mm -hmm. to active combat unless there is a congressional declaration of war as required by the constitution well, and, you know, and especially since the national guard is uh, the new hampshire national guard is supposed to be the new hampshire national guard and i get that it's all part of the army and the military and i but, but i think we are using the various states national guards as our army now well so of course there is uh problems with recruiting for the army and for most of the military that is uh twofold it is both that people are too fat Mm -hmm. to serve yep, that's uh, so that is a chronic health problem that is prevalent in mm -hmm. all of america now and or um that uh that people don't want to serve because they, well, they're just being sent into well, these and, wars and, you know, that don't seem justified when, that aren't true that are built on lies when and, you're in active duty military whether you're in the national guard or the army you know the pay is not phenomenal either well, like, it's not like you're, you know, it's not like 50 years ago where you joined the military because you either had to go to work in a factory, go to college, or join the military. Now, the leaner, meaner military isn't better paying. So I think, I mean, I think the benefits are still quite attractive, probably for first generation Americans. Probably. So, uh, you know, w where people are like, oh, I want to serve my country. Oh, they'll pay for my uh, education. Oh, mm -hmm. maybe I'll get an FHA, right. a veterans loan, right. whatever those things are. So there are a lot of perks built into it. But on the flip side, Again, you're, you're, might, you be might be in the desert for a to, year and a half war, or two years, where there is no declaration of yeah. war. So, and and that's an issue because I'm pretty sure when we immigrated in '96, my understanding of America was the following, and I had to like you know take some exams, <laughs> unlike you know most people in this country. <laughs> um, you know, I was like, oh, the governor is the president of their state. That's what I was taught, right? Like we have these states, they're out, all right. competing. You have like 50 presidents. You have a federal government that's supposed to be pretty much hamstrung. I learned that the National Guard was, as you say, sort of the local... The local military. I mean, they, they, they originally came from the militia, of course, mm. right? When you were still allowed to use that word without, you know, people losing their minds. And that the National Guard was basically like your state's little army, right? Yeah, like yeah. if you had a problem or if there's a cyclone or a <laughs> right. hurricane or a flood. National Guard, not, your, not the neighboring state's, states National Guard, you, your you National Guard. You get your people because those are our friends and neighbors and they are serving us right so all of that makes sense it's local you understand who the people are everyone's vested in in helping each other and all of that stuff because so that was in 96 so i think with the second iraq war they actually started deploying the national guard without like, like, they were never supposed to go to combat right, zones. Right, right. That was, like, never a thing. And then they just, like, basically, well, like, changed the uh, laws. Trust me, New Hampshire National people. Guard 100% was deployed all the time. Oh, over and over and over again. Oh. So I know people who were, I know families, you know, husbands or wives that went numerous deployments. Yeah. So, so basically, this bill... Um, you know, which I think is is important from sort of a state, uh, independent state sovereignty perspective in the sense that, you know, these are our friends and yeah, neighbors. Yeah. Um, and the Constitution actually says if we're going to deploy our military, there has to be a congressional yeah. declaration of war. And I'll tell you, you know, like you're talking about, like, the sovereignty and everything. Economically, the, people, there is a burden on the state when its National Guard is deployed because... Those employers of those individuals that are just weekend warriors, right, 
now have vacancies, which good luck today finding somebody to go to work and fill those vacancies. But not only that, they have to save those jobs for the returning weekend warrior who was deployed. So it creates these pockets of problems with employers. And I mean, God forbid you have, you know, you're a, um, you're a weekend warrior and you own your own business that your family right. supported from. You know, like, I don't know how they expect those people to survive. So, um, so as I say, the hearing, uh, the it, it was more a hearing to look at the language of the bill mm -hmm. and to sort of see what the landscape was. I would say there were probably 40, 40 50 people who came. I recognized a lot of veterans that yeah. I know who were deployed yeah. in, in uh, the Middle East. And, uh, and it was a really big committee, like 20 yeah. people on the committee. Uh, so they weren't taking public testimony per se, but they were letting people weigh in. Uh, you know, from the start, it sort of seemed to me like I was like, oh, this isn't going to go well. You know, it seems, uh, of course, also because, you know, there's a lot of talk about war in the yeah. air and people are like, oh, you know, and, and of course that should make us even more cautious yeah. about putting, you know, good people in harm's way. You know, we all remember weapons of mass destruction. We all remember, you know, the the, the murdered babies in the incubators, yeah. big fat lies, sort of like this Hamas beheading situation going on. They Basically, like to tell- Basically, you can't believe anything anymore. You Literally, cannot. you can't believe- You if should it, just switch off if, your TV. No, I mean, <laughs> seriously, if it seems hard to believe, that's probably because it's not true. And I would say, you know, just- uh, I'm not uh, saying if, that the Hamas didn't buy, you know, all these things, but the, the, the no, but extreme, it, like even somebody, I was listening to somebody yesterday and they were talking about somebody sent them this picture and they go, and it's horrific, but I don't know it's from Gaza. How do uh, I know first it? First of all, if, it, if from... it's the black burnt baby, it's not from Gaza. It's an actual AI generated photo, it's which really you can now tell because you can actually ask them to go look it up yeah. in the computer. So maybe they're good <laughs> for something. Um, but, but, you know, so, so based on how people were talking and stuff, it didn't seem like there was going to be, you know, it wasn't going to have any forward motion. Uh, Tom, Tom Mannion, I believe he's a Republican. I forget Sounds out familiar. of what, uh, I think he's out of the seacoast somewhere, but don't quote me on that. He was the main sponsor. He spoke very eloquently on it. Um, and then, you know, a few, uh, very old servicemen who I guess maybe had fought in Vietnam, uh, you know, we're like, no, we should send everyone kind of like, oh, like I, you know, I had to go to a war that wasn't declared. So everyone else should suffer too. I'm like, how about instead of that mindset, we actually fix the problem. If it is a just war or whatever, the pretty words people want to sit put around murdering other people for like some elite's Yep. gain. I mean, there are people who make money out of war. Yep. It's the banks, it's the central banks, it's the uh, offense contractors like Rayathon, BAE, BlackRock, Black Rock, State Street. I mean, Vanguard. all of them, right? Like, so, 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 so war is profitable for some people, but it also kills mm -hmm. a lot of innocent people. Yep. So, uh, so some people testified against it. So the read on the room, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be a good one. But then Tom actually asked right before they took the vote, he, he said, hey, who here is actually here in support of the bill? Right. And the entire room put up their hands. Right. It was a beautiful moment, yeah. right? And these are all, you know, like 28-year-old, 32-year-old veterans a lot of times uh just being like hey i'm here to be like i don't want this to happen to someone else has happened to me yeah. right or i i don't know if my I ages know. are I the know. right ages okay so uh, everyone put up their hands they then took the vote and it came out of committee 10 to 10 which means no recommendation yeah, so it's a no recommendation which means it goes to the floor with the oath to pass right no it goes with no recommendation so I will go with no recommendation and both sides will make a case. So it is going to become a floor fight. Interesting. And I think that is a huge opportunity for the anti-war people in New Hampshire, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent. If you're anti-war, we should all unite behind this issue. There is nothing... Uh, an ethical, like this is probably the most right. moral legislation I can think mm. of, right? We're literally just saying, hey, if you want to send our friends and neighbors to die, 
then you have to have the guts, Congress, to declare war. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the guts, you don't get to send yep. people to die. Yep. It's as simple as that. So I'm super excited. I think we can get a lot of people behind this. If you go to defendtheguard.us, you can get more information. There's a petition, sign up. They're doing the legislation in all kinds of different states, yeah. right? Yeah. So there are a lot of states trying to push it because they did try, I believe, long ago federally and that Good didn't luck. work so now work. really what we're trying to do is do it is on it, states uh, level where it really should be right of course right and so one of the the testimonies that i thought was quite interesting too is when katrina happened yes the 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 louisiana national guard was deployed in the Middle East. So we right? had to send everybody else to Louisiana. So, so that sort of happened. And one of the questions that came out of that was, uh, you know, they, the, uh, someone who was testifying against the bill sort of said, oh, it, it didn't matter that our National Guard wasn't there to help. Right. And in the questioning, it was like, are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure if you had more people helping with a really bad situation locally. Right. It would have been better. Right. <laughs> so I'm I'm excited. I'm cautiously optimistic, as I always am for everything. Uh, so hopefully that uh, that that can get the support. And people need to write letters. People need to Contact uh, their ta talk to your legislators. If you know veterans, get them involved. Get them. Uh, excited is probably the wrong word, but get them involved in this issue so that we can actually do something that will be good for humanity.